Hello, WitNet community, and welcome to the June Community Call recording. Today is June 29th, 2023, and we are going to be talking about the month of June. Um, this call is a little bit different for those who have been to the last few community calls, because June was a research inten intensive month for uh, WitNet 2.0. We were focused on developing the plan for the migration from random proof of eligibility to proof of stake and other in-depth topics like how to launch the decentralized bridge and how to formally change the tokenomics. So this community call will briefly go over the month of June on the growth side of Wit for WitNet and then we will talk much more in-depth about how proof of stake will look uh, when it's totally launched on WitNet. Um, of course, this call might be a little bit shorter than other ones that we've hosted, but be that as it may, we are still excited to share with you the information that we have been putting together for the last month, uh, two months, three months, actually. Um, as always, uh, there is a summary article, the, the June Roundup article on our blog, and uh, the next community call is going to be in about a month, uh, probably in, within the week of the 24th of July to the 28th. So uh, we hope to see you there. Without further ado, let's get started. The month of June. Here's what happened in the month of June. Let's begin with uh, chain integrations. The, f the first and only chain that we actually launched on was the Boba BNB Layer 2. Um, we formally integrated on uh, mid middle of June. Uh, so that was a very exciting uh, announcement for us. We actually took a grant from the uh, Boba team to help launch on this uh, layer two scaling solution for the Binance chain. Uh, and we actually launched some really exciting price feeds. So we saw um, the first ever WIT USDT price feed uh, to, to ever, excuse me, to go live ever within uh, the Oracle and on any of our 26 EVM compatible chains. So it updates once a day and it's getting all of its uh, data from Bitmart, uh, Gate.io and MXC. So, uh, up until this point, we haven't launched a uh, WIT USDT price feed because we didn't have enough uh, sources to um, supplement, supplement the price feed. And now that we finally do, uh, we can practice what we preach and um, finally make it go live with the three sources with the exchanges we're listed on. So that's fantastic. Next up, we have upcoming chain integrations. Um, first is Gnosis. Next, we have Obscuro. Next, we have Mantle. And then finally, we have Phantom. So that this is the reprioritized list of chains that we want to launch on. And actually, as I'm recording this, we have gone live on Gnosis Testnet. So this was uh, one day after the formal community call, which was the 28th. Today's the 29th. We just um, launched uh, on Testnet. We're monitoring the contracts now. And we'll probably make a formal uh, integration announcement on the 30th of uh, June. So by the time, if you watch this early, maybe you'll... Uh, I've yet to see that announcement. If you watch it after, you should have seen that announcement by now. So that's fantastic. Next up, we have the Kronos Grant Accelerator. We were very happy to accept an invitation to join the Kronos Grant program designed to boost projects building on Kronos that need an Oracle. So this collaboration will drive users uh, to the WitNet Oracle with strategic funding from both Kronos and the WitNet Foundation. So we're incredibly excited to see that. Uh, Kronos came to us. We're the only Oracle live on their chain. Uh, and they wanted to partner with us to help uh, push this project. So really excited for uh, what's to come with that. Next up, we have WitNet in the news. These are some tweets and tweet threads that I saw um, over, the, over the month. Actually, most of them coming in the last week. Uh, but these were the most interesting because we had a few tweet threads that were about um, decentralized Oracle networks and about um, you know totally just uh, reviewing WitNet as a whole. So really excited. Um, these were just fun to fun to see people uh, talking about. So please keep up that engagement in our Telegram, our Discord, and on Twitter. It really goes a long way. Thank you. And uh, without further ado, we'll now get into the proof of stake section of this, uh, the WitNet improvement proposal draft for proof of stake. Um, let's begin. So we begin with the motivation. Why do we want to be doing this change? The main motivation for creating these proposals are ones that have been noted and studied in WitNet's current environment, and the decision has been made to change the proof of stake because these problems cannot continue if we want to see the WitNet Oracle securing massive billion dollar protocols, something like Aave or uh, Compound, something like that. So first up, new identities do not equal new nodes or new operators. As it currently stands within WitNet, uh, node operators can shove uh, 
multiple, meaning like potentially thousands of identities into one node, not requiring um, multiple uh, collateral, and then basically you can up your reputation so that you can uh, mine more blocks and fulfill more data requests. So um, right off the bat, that sounds scary and bad, uh, and it's definitely a problem that is being fixed with proof of stake. But essentially, this um, this it's not an attack. So that's formally how we should say we should, it's it's not an attack. It's just a uh, a use of the open source software in a way that wasn't um, particularly expected when the network started. Similar to how um, we can people argue that Satoshi didn't expect uh, mining pools to be used when mining Bitcoin. Um, so that's kind of an interesting way to look at it. People are innovative in, in this industry. Um, but essentially, <clears throat> multi using multiple identities within one node causes late blocks, which uh, formally leads to chain rollbacks, which is always a problem, especially with an oracle. Um, it also disincentivizes node operators to continue running a node if they're not using this multiple identity. Um, it's because uh, for profitability reasons, so if you're just running one node versus somebody who's running these thousands of identities in one node, you're not likely to be profitable compared to them. Um, so it can definitely disincentivize running a node. Um, and like I said, it doesn't create attack vectors, but it has centralizing effects. So uh, the next uh, piece of motivation is that collateralization within WitNet isn't productive. A low coin price can ma cause manipulation of data feeds on the smart contract side of an EVM chain that is using WitNet, which is obviously the main use case for an Oracle, a uh, fully decentralized Oracle. Right? You want to be free from that manipulation um, and with uh, collateralization as low as it is, it's possible. It hasn't been. It hasn't happened yet, but it's possible for um, there to be manipulation on the uh, smart contract side. So, uh, also, current the current consensus mechanism uh, isn't attractive and doesn't correlate to network rewards. So that means it's essentially really hard to measure current and future revenues, and it dissuades new people from running new nodes. And on top of that, we have the um, multiple identity problem that we discussed earlier and uh, that kind of kind of just capitulates on top of each other uh, and lastly reputation isn't the most effective thing anymore reputation is highly volatile and a well-maintained node can lose reputation in an instant without necessarily being dishonest or misbehaving intentionally so it's also reputation within the current system because it's just computer code and it's non-deterministic uh, it's not a great way to measure true honesty and reliability because um, like I said, a well-maintained node can lose reputation without actually being or intentionally being uh, dishonest. Um, additionally, with a reputation, centralization problems can occur. So next up, we will move to benefits of proof of stake. Benefits are clearly identified, and I'm sure many of you can recognize why this shift is coming. Um, for starters, the Oracle can scale far better, far better with proof of stake and secure massive amounts of money. So it's important to remember that this is the first time in blockchain history that there is um, reliability without trust, especially with a true crypto economic incentive that is um, already, I mean, it's already happening with the WitNet Oracle as it is, but proof of stake will um, leverage those, those uh, assurances. So with proof of stake, we can also take components out of the equation that are necessary to random proof of eligibility, the current consensus mechanism, but not necessary to proof of stake. So this can scale the Oracle by a potential, uh, potential 15 seconds per block. Uh, proof of stake will also have a far better user experience, so nodes can easily predict and calculate their level of aggression when they want to stake and estimate their revenue. Um, nodes will be easily, easily able to stake and unstake, and it's a simple system to run and a simple system to manage for both new and old nodes. So another benefit is also uh, these large changes, while they do sound large, they don't equal massive um, undertakings, right? So the code changes can be implemented into the current existing code base, and we can remove the small things that aren't necessary. Um, and then I have a piece uh, down there about our three design goals that have always rang true since the start of the network in 2017, or excuse me, the start of the white paper in 2017. Data integrity, fairness, and low barrier to entry. So those are gonna be the pinnacles of what we, uh, how we proceed with proof of stake. Next up, we have the proposal of how this will actually happen. So it's actually quite simple if you think about it. Nodes that want to stake will perform what's called a stake transaction, which is essentially the, uh, the funds that they're staking will be added to a stake tracker. Once they're staked, they cannot be unstaked, and the, note, the coins begin aging. So the aging is a very important part, and it will be what, what sets Witnet aside from traditional proof-of-stake blockchains. 
Uh, all the rewards that a node receives will be automatically put back into their stake to accrue more rewards. And it's expected that the unstaking delay will be around two weeks. So essentially, when you stake, you are burning a UTXO, adding the coins to a stake uh, tracker, and then uh, they begin aging. And then when you want to unstake, they will be give, you'll be give, uh, given a new unspent transaction output, which you can then spend from two weeks after the, um, the request to unstake. So of course, this will uh, require new transactions in the Witnet network that will uh, formally, um, you know, be have there'll be block space for it, like for the stake transaction and the unstake transaction. So it's very it's quite simple to add that into the new uh, version. Um, so within the proposal, there's another piece of this called power. Power is a formula that will overtake the current reputation and eligibility formula, and it will help determine a node's ability to participate in a data request or mine a block. So this formula is the average age of a node's stake times the total stake of that node. So all the stake on a node is used at once for proposing a block, and then the age is reset to zero. So for all data requests, only the required collateral is used. So the interesting thing about that is that since the age is reset to zero once the um, stake has been used to validate a block, um, and since age is a, a very important factor in this formula, you don't actually have the um, centralization effects of just purely having a proof of stake mechanism that's based on how much you have staked at once, something similar to um, maybe Ethereum in that case. So it's very interesting and it's a totally unique way of doing proof of stake. So remember the age is the most important piece and that's what's going to uh, keep the network um, decentralized. So next up, as I just said, power and age help to level the playing field playing fields that large whales aren't controlling a lot of voting power on the network. Aging determines eligibility based on length of stake rather than total stake, and whales don't get extra much, much extra power because they're simply whales. So that's fantastic. Um, obviously we don't want more power to whales just because they have, they control a large portion of the total supply, which is um, indeed probable no matter what. Uh, next up, how to proceed. The general rule of thumb is that all blocks and transactions will be considered valid upon this network upgrade. This is a consensus change, so all nodes will need to flag support for it and physically update their clients so that they are running the most up-to-date version uh, of the blockchain. Otherwise, they won't be able to validate new blocks from those who did update and vice versa. <clears throat> this change is akin to Ethereum's merge or Bitcoin's block size wars, uh, and essentially we would need to find a specific block for this change to officially take effect so to allow miners enough time to update their clients. Additionally, we also need node support in order to pass this, so um, that's kind of an important piece, is that aside from the proposal being drafted by the Witnet Foundation, there is uh, nothing the Foundation can do to actually put this change into place. If, to, if nodes decide not to update, the network could fork, and uh, that's why we actually have the uh, what's called the TAPI mechanism, which um, basically just gauges the support from nodes, so we need an 80% approval for the uh, change to actually go into effect. Slide 13 now, we have the uh, the unknowns. So essentially, a few questions that I put together, if you guys, uh, basically some FAQs, things that we just don't have the answers to right now because we're still working out um, uh, different changes, especially with uh, tokenomics updates and that kind of stuff. So firstly, will this get passed? Uh, like I said, there's no central authority who has control over this proposal. We cannot say for certain if it will immediately be passed or if it needs to be worked on more. Uh, we do believe, however, that this is in all nodes best interest, so that's good, but like we said, we cannot force an upgrade if nodes aren't willing to upgrade, which is kind of the beauty and the um, frustration of having a fully decentralized network. Um, next up, we have the minimum staking requirements. We estimate this to be around 1,000 WIT to prevent spam, but this is not set in stone. And also, 1,000 WIT will um, allow for the low barrier to entry um, perspective to continue to uh, be true, and because 1,000 wit is not a lot, it's essentially, um, off the top of my head, a few a few dollars maybe. So the maximum staking threshold, uh, we don't believe that there's a need for maximum staking in this, in this specific proposal, because uh, the implementation of stake age helps negate whales holding large amounts of wit and controlling the network. Uh, next up, what is the APR? We have no exact figures for this. It still revolves greatly around tokenomics and other... Um, other things that we can't determine until 
proof of stake officially goes live, most likely. Um, and of course, the research around tokenomics took a backseat to the proof of stake research because tokenomics is an easier change to make. Uh, we have a few proposals that we just haven't made public yet, so um, we'll see how that how that uh, works in a few months. Uh, am I required to run a node in order to stake? In early in the early days, yes, most likely, because this ensures stability for the protocol after a massive massive change like a consensus hard fork. Um, and you know, without the distractions of an in wallet staking or a cloud staking service, we'll be able to ensure stability over usability. And um, this is most likely to change, of course. All right, and that was it. That's the June community call. Please uh, ask any questions you have in the comments below or in our Telegram, our Discord, on Twitter, whatever you need. Uh, like I said, there will be an article on our uh, blog for any questions you have or any um, more specifications you need. And um, without further ado, we will conclude this here. We hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.